The following video is going to walk through a couple of different unified agent policy check examples for when you're scanning your code with MINS unified agent and you'd like to run a policy check in the pipeline. So this is an open source project, build policy demo. You should be able to come here and look at all of this and how it works. So we're going to start off with a couple of prerequisites. First off, we want to make sure that we use environment variables or a blank configuration file with only the necessary changes in order to utilize the MIND unified agent. Uh, this is explained in the getting started with the unified agent documentation here. Environment variables are recommended. If you're going to use a configuration file, create a blank one. Do not use the referenced um, configuration file that shows every single parameter underneath the sun. So next up, we also have the configuration parameters we'll be working with for checking policies, check policies, force check all dependencies, update inventory, force update, and force update fail build on policy violation. So if you read more about managing automated policies, you'll see that check policies equals true is the base for returning an exit code when you have any reject actions. Force check all dependencies equals true will check all of your dependencies instead of just the newly added dependencies. And update inventory false allows you to check for this without updating the inventory of a scan. So this is all detailed here as well. So some of the recommendations, uh, and first off, what you want to do is you want to have a policy. In this case, I have a policy on the product. And you can see that I have my most important policy first. We're going to be looking at policies that are failing on CVSS 7.0 through 10. I want that to trigger before any of my other policies because the policies trigger per library. So on my main or default branch, so even though my update inventory is equal true because that's the default, the unified agent will exit with a fail when the results are blocked. So the user... Uh, the results will not be in the UI. So the user will need to view the rejected results with a policy rejection summary.json or the check policies JSON within the white source folder. So on a main or default branch, it's recommended if you only want to block newly added dependencies that have been merged in from a feature branch, just turn on white source check policies equals true. That's it. Now, if you want to check for every single dependency, we also want to add force check all dependencies equals true. This will check the previous inventory and then what also is added on the new scan. So then moving on to like a feature, hotfix, or development branch, which is ephemeral, these are usually getting merged into a main or default branch. What we want to do is we want to use the same product and project name as the default branch. Uh, the below script uh, is very helpful when there's not an environment variable, like in GitHub Actions, they have this handy event repository default branch, or you can use this script to just grab, grab whatever the default branch is by looking up what head is on your remote. So then you typically on a feature branch, we recommend you only block newly added dependencies and not all dependencies that are there because they would be previously there from the main branch, right? Because typically a feature branch is created from a main. And then you don't want to up the inventory. So really, just two settings. Check policies equals true, or update inventory equals false. And then finally, the last combination, it's useful in proof of concepts, but not recommended for production, because the last thing we want to do is be blocking developers' builds on branches and updating the inventory. So. What you'd want to do here is this allows you to view new and existing library results in the UI for a broken build, basically, so you can see everything. Uh, once again, not really recommended for production or rollout. This is more for a POC, so you can see, hey, you can prove out that you can block a build and then see what's blocked in the UI. Now let's look at a few examples in this project. So in this project, I have a package lock file, so my dependencies <coughs> are locked for the build. And then if you look at my GitHub workflow, you can see that my min policy default check on the master branch, I'm just using check policies true 
and then notice my product and project name is GitHub event repository name. So my repo name is the product and my repo name underscore branch name is the project. And then I'm using my API and user key all with environment variables. So if I were to look at this scan and scroll down, we'll see that we're checking policies. Policies report's been generated successfully and there was no problems. All my uh, dependencies conform with open source policies because it's looking at new dependencies added and no new dependencies have been added here on the main branch. Now, if we were to go to a feature branch, and in this case, my feature branch, I've added a private package to my lock file. So if we look at my package JSON, you can see that I've added a at mend vuln package 1.01 and if we want to see what that consists of we would go to the package lock file where all the dependencies are listed and here we'll see at mend vuln package and if we we know that at mend vuln package actually just has async as a library and it's got async 2.6.3 as a hard-coded library, which has a critical vulnerability in it. So between 7 and 10 CVSS. So if we were to look where we've added this on the build, we can see the details. And we can see that we have a policy check and we've exited code with policy violation. So it's got a policy violation because some dependencies do not conform. We can look in the white source folder and see the results of what those are. So just to go back and show you the settings that we used for this and the uh, workflow, GitHub workflows. If we look for the private package branch, and we look at this policy check for the feature branch, we're using check policies equals true and white source update inventory equals false. So the last thing I want to show you is uh, I mentioned the, the way you'd find these policy violations and information about them. It's in the white source folder, so you'd want to make sure that you publish that as a part of your pipeline. Depending on what pipeline you're using, it could be different. Uh, we show you how to do this in our MEND toolkit, MEND examples, underneath pipeline log publishing. Here's an example of how to do it for GitHub Actions. A lot of useful information in the MEND toolkit as well. You'll also see more of these policy check examples here. Thank you for watching this presentation, and if you have further questions, please reach out to your white source representative or you can visit our website for more information.